Hello my friends, I'm keeping domesticating SolidWorks and for today I have prepared for you an interesting project. Today we are going to make power bank using 3D printer. This project has started from this power bank module. It has one S input, near 4 volts. Apart from that, some protections for batteries. And of course, charging indicator on the back front of the module. It was laying idle for a really long time. And only now I decided to make a power bank. I have taken all sizes of it and modeled such box. It was made for 5 batteries 18650. That means that its maximum capacity is near 15000 mAh per hour. Because batteries of the same size with bigger capacity are not exist. Before 3D modeling you should imagine yourself final product that you are going to make. Because there are too many nuances that can be prevented. Set your eyes on the hole on the front panel. It's not without purpose there. Location of the button on this module is not correct. It should be done on the front panel and of course not on the back side, because power bank will be always turned on. But this is not the main problem. And here we have the printed box. I used ABS plastic, because it has best properties for tooling. Of course it's not the first model. I have others and they have many defects. As you can see, module fits there accurately. The button didn't fit there, but I don't have another one. I've taken a piece of bamboo stick and glued it on the top of the button using a super glue. And now button turns perfectly. Holes on the downside of the box I have filled up with hot glue. And we've got really interesting light effect. Moreover, dirt won't get into the box. And now it's time to solder new button to our PCB. Of course using wires with lens near 5 cm. And here is the result. Next fail was with battery contacts. Time ago I saw on YouTube that somebody take nickel plates and make contacts for batteries 18650. I decided to make the same one and was disappointed. Because nickel has no rigidity. They were just bended after first contact with battery. So I decided to solder them. It's time to choose batteries that we are going to use. I have only 4 with good quality and 5th I will take with lower capacity. These batteries are thinning easily if you know some secret. You have to take powerful soldering iron near 100 watts and thin battery in one touch, of course using flux. And now I'm preparing wires. I recommend you to use only it, not nickel plates. Just believe me, they are really better. And of course there are some difficulties during the process. We can't solder batteries inside the box, because it just will melt. And also we can't solder them outside the box, because they won't fit again inside it. And I invented some cunning for it. Just take scotch tape and some wood sticks. And only now it's ready for soldering. And all filling looks like this without box. Next step is tooling the box with acetone which dissolves it. I've taken a piece of rag and moistened it with acetone and just wiped the box. Case has to become smooth. Also I've made a print of my logo on the top of the box. Using CNC laser. I wanted to colorize it, but I don't have such paints. Put all the details into the case and test. The charging module I've glued on the bottom of the box, but it's not applicable for our button, because it just can break down. So I decided to solder it to the case. 
The black fluid into the syringe is ABS plastic dissolved in a stone. It's a really nice glue for this material. The gaps were eliminated, but it don't look perfectly. I don't think that tests are interesting for you, but I will make them. This power bank works perfectly on two ports without overheat. So that's all for today. Write down in comments if there was some incomprehensible moments in my speech. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.